I want to talk about is I have spent my whole career in information technology. That uh, in 1958, I took a one semester course on computer programming, the only one semester course uh, that Harvard had on it. And so I can program UNIVAC 1 in machine language, zeros and ones if necessary. I also understand how to program an IBM 650 in SOAP. I understand the importance of the rotational delay of the drum. All of that, which is utterly irrelevant today, except to make the point that I've been around a long time. And that my point that I want to make today comes from one of my colleagues the other day. He said, Warren, he said, your field, it's a really hard field because the accumulated knowledge changes and changes and changes. You know, other fields basically have more depth. And I said, I don't actually think that's right. And that is what I'm going to be talking about this afternoon, that the technologies change and change and change. That always there are new technologies. I enjoyed the discussion today on the cloud and cybersecurity. They were scintillating, and I said, now what will we be worrying about six years from now? Because there is always a new technology. But underlying it, there are some basic management uh, principles. My first book, which I was actually able to find, was written exactly 50 years ago that called Management Information Systems, Text and Cases. Uh, the first one of these books appeared in the field in information technology. And I was reading it on the plane out last night, and I decided, net net, I wasn't embarrassed <laughs> that I talked about the complexity we called it in those days the job of data processing manager, but the complexity of managing the technology, dealing with boards of directors and CEOs who were sometimes a little bit Luddite-ish in terms of their views of the world and not understanding expenditures, and end users who were always a pain in the ass wanting a lot of stuff late and not understanding what it took to do. Those issues, they in fact endure year after year after year. And so I say, I'm, I'm starting in 58. But of course, as you know, the field really began as a result of a failed census in 1890. That by 1900, they had not been able to process the data. That led to the census of 1900, the beginning of the punch card, and so forth. So the roots came out of that. There was also the work in the University of Pennsylvania in 1943, the ENIAC, but in a real way that it only hit the commercial world, starting with the insurance companies and the banks, 55, 56, 57. So this was very beginning. What I want to do is, because I come from the Harvard Business School, I'm going to tell the story through a series of real case studies. I have over my career written over 300 case studies in information technology, and I picked 13 that I think will capture uh, the message that I wanted to get across uh, today. The first one, Harmony Life of Hartford. That case has a sales department which wants a new tool. They believe it will be able to improve sales illustrations. They have hauled out of thin air like users do. This will increase by 33% the sales per call. The chief information officer, Mr. Heller, basically sees this as a violation of corporate standards, screwing up infrastructure development and other protocols and standards. And the chief executive officer got caught in the middle of this. I rewrote this case six months ago changing only the nouns so that I took out the technology and I got rid of the word data processing and I taught it. I taught it to a group of CIOs and the discussion was almost as good as it was back in 1961 when it was first written. The problems, the complexities, they have stayed on and on and on. At the heart of the case, C.P. Snow's two-culture problem. There is the end-user culture who has their particular needs. 
There is your culture who understands the technology, the cyber security, the cloud, all that other kind of stuff, and getting the two together. It was hard in 1961, and I regret to say it was hard in 2015.